why do entertainers make so much more than everyone else? Let's talk about it. Thanks to business magazines like Forbes, we're all privy to the monetary minutes of the rich and famous. There's nothing wrong with money per se. Bill Gates and his wife Melinda have donated $36 billion to charitable causes. Leonardo DiCaprio set up a foundation 20 years ago to tackle environmental issues, and even Kim Kardashian has used her reality TV clout to call for criminal justice reform. But videos and articles about celebrities' net worth tend to equate wealth with savvy and success. Social media builds that narrative too. Many high-profile figures perpetuate unattainable lifestyles, sharing snaps of designer clothes, expensive cars, or trips to luxury locations. Unlike previous generations, we know exactly how the other half lives, so it's only natural that aspirations around money and fame infiltrate our psyche. If we glorify the wealthy, what does that say about those of us working full-time jobs for five-figure salaries? Are we less deserving or simply not worth as much? And is there a way to track our value to society that isn't monetary? Let's ask three questions in this video. Why are some jobs paid so much more than others? Can salary affect our sense of self-worth? And are we contributing to pay disparities without even realizing it? We're not saying that the top athletes, actors, and performers don't deserve their multi-million dollar paychecks. Most are incredibly talented and diligent. But let's not forget that childcare workers, teachers, nurses, and plenty of other workers also bring skills and worth ethics to their respective fields, and they contribute to the public good. Unfortunately, their modest incomes generally don't reflect that. Well, there are two main factors affecting how much a job is valued and therefore paid. One, how many people can perform the role and two, whether the role generates revenue or prestige for the employer. A teacher can't generate as much value as an Olympic runner can, and there are more people who can do that job, teaching. And so teachers can't threaten to go elsewhere and ask for more money. Sports stars and celebrities are idolized for their talents and oftentimes their looks, so it makes sense that brands are keen to profit off their cachet through job contracts and endorsement deals. That makes their monetary value far higher than the average teacher or nurse. Some well-paid careers like acting and modeling come with a trade-off. If you make it into these professions, you receive a huge financial reward. But part of that you're being rewarded for is your looks, and that's the result of a sexist society that places too much value on how a woman looks. Sexist stereotypes don't just exist in Hollywood and the fashion industry. They can be found in our mainstream workforce. It's no coincidence that lower paid jobs like nursing, teaching, and early childhood education tend to be the ones that are dominated by women. They are jobs that are thought proper to women, jobs that require the qualities that women are thought to have. Of course, the idea that women are inherently awesome at caring for others is thankfully outdated. But the accompanying belief that because women are born nurturers, they don't need to pay them or pay them well to endure. If current salaries are anything to go by, teaching children or looking after the elderly must be an absolute cinch. Then there's confusing pay with self-worth. Our contemporary attitudes towards who deserves what pose serious moral concerns. Plato said not only is it bad to value fame for fame's sake, rather than fame for the sake of virtue or some positive contribution to society, but the very worst thing is to confuse success with material wealth. The danger is that footballers and film stars and so on, because of their massive salaries, will simply become unconsciously feel that they are worth more not just in material terms, but in terms of moral value or contribution to society. And other people in society who aren't the footballers will also think that's okay, and continue to buy the magazines and sort of condone and go along with this system. Lower paid professionals like teachers, nurses, and social workers may subscribe to these limited beliefs. There's the danger that inside, logically, they're going to end up feeling inferior because they have less money, and because we have confused money with success and worth. Then, society suffers when people are underpaid. There are real-world consequences for this type of thinking. Low wages of childcare workers actually degrade the quality of early education. We fail childhood workers by not paying them a decent wage, but we also fail children because they would benefit if we took the profession more serious. More young people would be attracted to the profession, so there would be more competition, they would require more training. The first five years of life are so important. The brain is developing at such a high speed and children are learning so much. These workers can play an important role in their moral education, in the development of important social skills and excitement about learning. There's another fundamental flaw in our current economic system. It's unfair for some people to reap profits and others to scrape by because ultimately every role matters. It's very naive to think that when you perform well in your profession, it's all due to your hard work. A surgeon can only perform surgeries if there are qualified nurses working at her hospital. And a CEO can only strike good deals for the company if he or she is not busy answering phone calls every day. Whether we realize it or not, we're able to do our job because of the army of people who clean the streets, make the train run, care for our children, and perform other less valued tasks. 
It's only when we all come together and do our bit that we as a society can provide essential services and create the conditions for us to do the things we love, be that brain surgery or being an executive or journalist or in some cases, a philosopher. So lastly, are we unconsciously widening the gap? If you're not a CEO, HR person, or manager, the wealth gap might seem like someone else's problem. But according to experts, they all play a part. People might think this is a terrible system, but they're not actually fighting against it. They're not taking their money away from the celebrity cult. Through following celebrities, social media accounts, or buying the products they endorse, we're contributing to the enormous wealth of the elite. Of course, as one person, it's not going to make a difference, but enough people liking a product or getting excited about a product because of a celebrity can contribute to this degree of inequality. It's very important that we think about consumption as a kind of ethical enterprise. We're always going to affect people when we consume, and we can both benefit and harm people with the choices we make. Social media scrolling can be a passive activity, but it's worth considering. Do I want to support this person or this ideology? Before you like, retweet, or share their contact that glorifies fame and fortune. But economic inequality won't be resolved by simply following a bunch of nurses and childcare workers on Instagram. So what can we actually do to help? Our current economic system isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's unlikely we'll see some kind of mass redistribution of wealth from rich celebrities and billionaires to the working class. But that doesn't mean we have to just throw our hands up in the air and support the status quo. The free market will never be fair, but if we stop associating money with worth, maybe the workers who make society better will receive a bit more of the respect they deserve. So what are your thoughts? Are you someone with a real job? If you like this video, hit that like button, consider subscribing. I talk about money and everything related to it, so don't miss out. And as always, take care of your money.